Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cruising with a Case Sandler, a show that is brought to you by the law firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and Seco. And yes, we are here uh, today to speak on immigration. Adam Handler, who is the actual case handler, is out today. He normally speaks on personal injury, and he heads up the department at the firm, the personal injury department. Do remember that if you do get hurt in an accident, you will need him. You know, God forbid you get hit by a bus, a truck, a car, or any kind of accident where a slip and fall, medical mal malpractice, construction accident, and so forth, Adam Handler will be there for you. And he will definitely treat you like family, just like the other attorneys at PPID does. All right? So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am David Squeeze of the Link Up Media Group of Companies. They say I'm the CEO. And I am the host of the show along with my co-host today. We've got Alan E.K., the man who's got all of the information on immigration. He's going to be giving us updates in between. We're going to be breaking up the show a little bit, putting questions on, doing some updates and switching it up a bit, making it more interesting and making it more with a better continuum. So, ladies and gentlemen, just make sure that right now you actually do us a favor and start sharing. Let me introduce the panel. I said Alan E.K., Let's introduce, of course, the lady on the panel today. She's one of the attorneys at the firm, Alexandra Bondakov. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here. And we also have the Maverick. That's the name he was given, a nickname, because of how good he is at handling specific cases in the capacity of immigration. He does everything in immigration, but the man is very specific with certain cases. Mr. Nelson Madrid, that's your government. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I am wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's jump right into it. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., we have a super mega PPID law forum. I want everyone tuning into 93.5 WVIP FM. Stop what you're doing right now. You will get an opportunity to speak with so many different attorneys at the firm PPID. Bring all your questions in all different areas of law. All right? And they'll point you in the right direction if the attorneys are not physically there. All right? Once again, this, for, uh, this uh, forum is 6 p.m. Yes, it will be on 93.5 FM. Yes, you will need to register if you want to actually participate in the forum. And you can do that by going to eventbrite.com and just type in PPID. That's it. You go to eventbrite.com and you type in PPID, you'll be able to register. Now, we got a few more seats on the panel. So if you want to jump in, you will be able to do that now by registering. Once again, PPID Law Forum, February the 5th, 6 p.m. New York time. And we are asking you to ask all your friends, maybe your members of churches, groups all over the place. Just do us a favor and actually, ladies and gentlemen, tell them about the show, send them the link, forward it to them. We're going to be texting, email blasting and letting people know about it. We would love to have you on that Zoom session via Eventbrite. Once again, the show today, we're going to be speaking on immigration. So let's jump right into it. Um, Alan E.K., I'm going to let you give two bullets, three bullets, three items you want to speak about at first. See, everyone's smiling at, at me. Alexandra's like, you're only giving him three? Three for now. <laughs> three for now. I'm giving, I'm giving Alan E.K., who loves to give information. He loves to share information. I'm giving him three items he can speak on. So Choose carefully, Alan E.K. Esquire. Okay, three items you can speak on right now, and then we'll get into questions and talk more about people coming to the big PPID virtual forum tomorrow at 6 p.m. via eventbrite.com. Alan E.K., the floor, the stage is all yours. You got your three bullets there. Okay, the first bullet, a very happy bullet. Alexandro Mayorkas has been sworn in as the Secretary of Homeland Security. This is the third largest federal department in the United States. It includes the Coast Guard, CBP, ICE, CIS, Secret Service. <clears throat> Mr. Mayorkas was the director of USCIS uh, some years ago. Then he became De deputy secretary of DHS, which he's now heading, and now he's the head of DHS. And Mayorkas has said that it's the greatest privilege of my life to return to this department. Uh, I will work every day to ensure they have the tools they need to execute their missions with honor and integrity. Uh, the mission of the Department of Homeland Security is to safeguard the American people, our homeland and our values. The US is a welcoming and empathetic nation. 
one that finds strength in its diversity. I pledge to defend and secure our country without sacrificing these American values. And interestingly, some of you may not know that Mayorkas is the first immigrant to serve in the role of DHS secretary. His parents arrived with him as a refugee after fleeing from Cuba in 1960. And as I said, he was DHS deputy secretary from 2013. Then he was the director of CIS. He's a great guy. He's a lawyer. He's a smart man. And so this is this is very, very happy news because he had to clear the Senate and it did clear the Senate and he's got sworn in now. Okay, next, uh, we're talking about uh, people who have to come to the United States and they have to show the negative COVID-19 viral test within three calendar days of traveling. And if you had uh, the virus, you can't come to the United States until some time has passed and you get a letter from a healthcare provider that shows that you've recovered from that. Uh, finally, I decided to go on the website for the Kingston, Jamaica to see what they're saying about what's going on. And it's really nice stuff, including that they will say, we promise you, we'll treat you with dignity and respect. Even if we can't guarantee a visa, we'll treat you as an individual and your case is unique. And they are saying that if you're a student, we're gonna make every effort to assure you get an early appointment to come and start classes. And if you have a medical or humanitarian reason to come, we'll kind of expedite that for you. So kind of nice things on the website for Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, finally, uh, on uh, DACA, Trump was trying, President Trump, ex-President Trump, I shouldn't mention his name anymore, was trying to get rid of DACA. Uh, the Biden administration is doing the opposite. They're trying to preserve DACA. And DACA now, there's 700,000 people enrolled in DACA. And Biden is calling on Congress to <clears throat> adopt legislation which give DACA recipients permanent legal status and a path to citizenship. And, and finally, <clears throat> if, you don't, if you didn't file for DACA, you can file now as long as you were born on or after June 15, 1981 came to the United States before the age of 16. We're in the in US on June 15, 2012, and you're still here. No immigration, you had no immigration status as of June 15, 2012. You're a high school graduate, enrolled in high school, you got GED, <clears throat> and no significant criminal record. <clears throat> so this is a good thing. The Biden administration is gonna preserve and enhance DACA, whereas the ex-president was trying to get rid of it. And also, now you you are able with, on previous DACA to get travel permits, but it's gonna be easier on the Biden administration to get a travel permit. And a lot of people in on DACA have not been home since they were little kids to visit their parents and relatives. So that's- What is, Alan, what is, what is DACA? Okay, DACA is a program that was put in, in effect under the Obama administration. Uh, and it's, it stands for childhood arrivals. And so these are people <clears throat> who came to the United States sometime, meet the qualifications. Obama's administration put it in, and these people got working cards, and they, beca they became legal, not permanent, but they got working cards. In certain issues, instances, they were able to travel and get travel permits. So it's, it's, there are 700,000 people on DACA. So we're talking about a lot of kids who came here early and born after June 15, 1981, of the other things I said. And it's a very good program. And President Biden is uh, promising to try to put these people on a path to legal immigration. I was just about to say, will there be a path to it? Yes, absolutely. There will be a path to legal immigration for these DACA people, as well as path to legal immigration for a lot of other people there are probably 11 million people here <clears throat> with no legal status. And President Biden is promising to try to put these 11 million people on a path to legal immigration. And that there's a US, that's the US Citizenship Act of 2020, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about later. And we'll, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about it <clears throat> on our Friday's program, <clears throat> but He's trying to get some of these 11 
million people who are here with no status <clears throat> to get them on a path to legal immigration. And that's part of his U.S. Citizenship Act of 2020. So okay. those are my, I have a lot more points, but I'm going to leave some time for questions now. Okay. Once again, folks, this is Carl Cruising with a case handler, a show on immigration today. Bring all your immigration questions. All right. You can reach out to us, ladies and gentlemen. We get those immigration questions answered. You can do, do that by simply logging on to our Facebook page, David Squeeze Anakin. That's mine. The firm's page, PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Nasico. The case handler page, the case handler. And ask your immigration questions. You can also call 844 774 3529. That's 844 PPID Law. And you can schedule a consultation with, of course, the great, phenomenal attorneys, Nelson Madrid, Alexandra Bondakov, and of course, the man himself, Alan E. K. With that said, it's time to jump into some questions, and I uh, got the first question here. Ladies first, so I will ask this one right here. Uh, how long does it usually take to get an interview after the F2A, LPR, DQ? Can an interview be expected in June, July, if the DQ, I guess that means documentary, qual- documentary qualified. qualified, is done by February and the ban is lifted the 31st of March. So they want to know how long it will take or usually take. This is a very easy answer. Uh, I, I don't think anybody knows at this point. Uh, the reason is, is that people have to remember that no visas were issued since March of last year which basically means that the consulates have a long line of people whose cases have become documentarily qualified during this time. Um, I believe that the consulates uh, will implement a first in first out system. So it will be a while, that would be my guess. Uh, I I don't think that it's reasonable to expect that an interview in this particular case, uh, that the case became just recently documentarily qualified would take place by June. Gotcha. Um, and by the way, I, I think this is a very nice segue into what I wanted to say uh, is the, the visa bans. Um, we all expected that the new administration or the president would be lifting those. He hasn't yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and frankly, the, we, we are not hearing anything that the, uh, a lift is upcoming. So I think that it's quite likely that he was just let them take their course and let them expire on March 31st. Beautiful. The voice of Alexandra Bondikov. She's one of the top attorneys at the firm PPID, ladies and gentlemen. So you can also call and schedule your appointment with her for a consultation. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Let me take 10 seconds out before I get to the next question and ask everybody that's actually, you know, uh, watching us on Facebook, do me a solid and share two things. One, I'd like to like for you to share what it is that you're watching with as many friends as possible. If you can do David Squeeze Anarchy and the firm a solid and just share these great attorneys and myself on other uh, timelines, groups, and pages, we would appreciate that. Also, there is an event bright link for the big PPID Law Forum tomorrow. Um, if you can also share that link, we'd appreciate it. Share that link for the Law Forum tomorrow at 6 p.m., which is going to be on 93.5 FM. It's going to be on eventbrite.com. I want to say thanks to Zena. I want to say thanks to, of course, Ali, Allison on our side, um, respectively, for actually, you know, helping out putting all of this together. Make sure you're a part of it. Register for it. Bring all your questions in, on family law, criminal defense, personal injury, immigration, real estate, business law, and a whole lot more. But please, register. And you can do that by going to eventbrite.com, typing in PPID, and it will pop up. Register for free. Yeah, free. And we're giving away an iPad and more. All right? We're giving away an iPad and more. I'm giving away 200 bottles of BioLife. All right? And we're giving away 200, of course, free credit repair service. So we get, we're giving away a whole lot tomorrow. Make sure you're there, 6 p.m. sharp, 93.5, and definitely live via Eventbrite and Zoom. Be a part of it and ask your question. With that said, here's a, uh, a question for the Maverick himself, all right? Um, this one says, I filed for my minor daughter, F2A, on March 18, 2019. They approved my case almost a year already. The fact there, over a year already, the fact there is that I don't have a current 
Mexican passport for her. Started for her. Started fighting for it in Mexi Mexican court about three years ago. Do you think it's good that I upload the expired passport so they don't cancel my petition? So an F2A is a spouse and children of permanent residents. Um, so this person is a permanent resident petitioning for her child. Um, you can upload the passport. I would also contact the consulate um, and just basically let them know that you're experiencing issues obtaining a passport. Obviously, at some point, that child will need a valid passport to travel. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, again, and, and we've said this often on this show, you know, uh, dealing with immigration, in my opinion, is a roll of the dice, right? You have some people that are more sympathetic than others. You have some people that are going to want to help you. You have some people that are looking for any reason to deny your case or just make it extremely difficult for you. Um, but again, I would reach out to the consulate. I would contact the consulate, let them know what's happening. Um, and hopefully there's something they can do for you. Absolutely. And if you have a problem getting in touch with the consulate, contact us and we'll help you. There you go. And, and respectively, once again, that's the voice of Nelson Madrid expounding on that. Okay. And then you heard Alan following up. Those are attorneys at the firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Once again, people, if you listen to this station, if you watch Facebook, the only firm, in my opinion, that you should actually be going to and using is PPID, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you reach out to them. The number, 844-774-3529. It doesn't matter where in the world you are. If you're looking towards U.S. immigration benefits, you call PPID. The number, 844-774-3529. Give them a call. I challenge anyone on this station, off this station, to be better than my attorneys at PPID. No, you won't find anyone better. Come on, look at Alan. I, I won't even let Nelson expand on how long this man has been, you know, uh, practicing, you know, immigration law. You know, I remember Nelson in the early part of us starting telling us that you went to um, the Department of Homeland Security with um, the general, right? And they were a celebrity. Right. I, I, I did. And, and that is correct. You know, in fact, Alan has probably been practicing longer than I have been alive. Wow. OK, and we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> OK, we'll leave it at that. So, so why would anyone want to go anywhere else? Call PPID. Alan E.K. is there. Make the call. The number is 844-774-3529. If you want more information on a, on a monthly basis, weekly basis, make sure you also email news at ppid.com. That's news at ppid.com. Here's one for you, Alan. I'll let you jump in on this one. All right. Uh, okay. I have heard that follow, that follow to join petition expires after a year. However, during the interview, the embassy told my dad, that your wife, son, daughter can easily get their visas anytime they want to apply. Also, my case status shows that it is ready for your interview when scheduled at the U.S. Consular Section. Category F4, principal applicant, my dad, which is a green card holder. Well, the problem is that an F4 is backlogged till October 15, 2006. So I have to know when the F4 petition was filed. And F4 is really brothers and sisters of U.S. citizens. And that F4 will include all children under 21 when the visa is issued. So I've got to really know a little bit more about when the petition was filed. And as I say, in, in this month, F4 is up to October 15th, 06. So I've got to know when that petition was filed. So get back to us and give me that information and I, I can talk to you more about it. Okay. Once again, folks. It's called Cruising with a Case Handler, a show on personal injury and immigration. And today we're focusing on immigration and also reminding you that tomorrow, yes, we're going to be on at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow, February the 5th, but we're, all, we're also going to be on, on at 6 p.m. New York time. And we're going to be speaking about real estate law. Bring your, uh, your family law questions. I mean, uh, Nelson, um, Alexandra, you know, Alan, are we going to have someone in the family law area? Well, we'll um, be about family law from the immigration point of view, but some of the other lawyers on the with us will probably be talking about family law. That'll be great. Thank you so much for that. All right. Once again, folks, 
PPID Law Forum Virtual One tomorrow, 6 p.m. New York time. If you'd like to be a part of it, go to eventbrite.com, type in PPID and register. It is free. We're giving away iPads. We're giving away supplements. We're giving away some finance um, options for people, okay, at zero cost, all right? Nothing. All right, here's another question, okay? Can a certificate of employment be used as proof of U.S. domicile? Well, the question um, is, go ahead, Nelson, go. Right. So U.S. domicile, a certificate of employment, why not get a job letter? You know, also, you know, a bank account, a lease, uh, you know, your license, uh, credit card statements, bank account statements. You know, typically there's not a magic bullet, you know, um, when you want, when you show, when you have to show domicile, the more you have, the better. Uh, that's just my opinion, you know? So, I mean, a certificate of employment, again, I think a, a current employment letter stating the amount of time you've worked for the company, what capacity, maybe even your income, um, as well as everything else that I discussed, I think is, is proof of domicile. There's something missing in this question. Who is asking for the proof of domicile? If and for what reason? Right, I was about to say. But what are they trying to prove, basically? Yeah. Right, right, but I think I think irrespective of the question, that's how you demonstrate domicile. Right, I think they should call you guys. That's what I think. You know, uh, that's something that I, I like to speak with people about. You know, listen, we invest so much in our lives in other areas. Yes, we have a roof over over our head. We have a vehicle to drive. You know, we're putting food on the table, but there's also something that's important: staying in the United States legitimately. All right, you know, I have legal status. And you don't want to actually work on that yourself. Have the professionals, have the attorneys at PPID work on that. That's what they're all about. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. At least schedule a consultation with them. All right? I mean, you have heard Alan E.K. with information saying, with so much coming down the pike where Biden is concerned, many people are rushing to the consultants, the guys in the corner, the, the gals in the corner, down there, Gunner Road, Eastern Parkway, wherever, you know, and then people are getting burnt. I'm not saying everybody's bad, but people are getting burnt by people out there. Go with a law firm that you hear cons consistently on this station, 93.5, where you have heard testimonies right here on 93.5 and also on Facebook. The name of the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. We refer to them as PPID, the phone number. Everyone, dial the number right now, okay? Let it ring 10 seconds. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Hire Nelson. Hire Alexandra. Hire Alan. Hire the firm. Let them do the dirty work. They enjoy doing it. They enjoy doing the dirty work. Once again, the number is 844-774-3529. Public charge. Let's talk a little bit about that, gentlemen and lady. What's the status of it? Is, is it still in effect? Expound on it. What is it? And how can it affect people? Is it going away, not going away? Attorneys, I don't know if um, Alexander want to jump in on this one or Alan. Okay. Well, um, it's still in effect, okay, however... Um, as you, as you, as your listeners have undoubtedly heard by now, because we've been talking about public charge over and over and over again, that rule is tied in litigation. And this week, the Biden administration announced that they will not defend the lawsuit, basically. So they're dropping the appeal. Uh, so the uh, future of this rule is in, in the hands of the courts. Uh, we do believe and hope and expect uh, that will be set aside. Uh, the timeline for that, though, is, is not clear at this point. Uh, if the litigation doesn't go the way we want it to go, then the administration would have to go through the notice and publication um, process uh, in order to repeal it, but they have indicated that uh, they, they want it gone. So it will happen. Um, uh, it's just not going to happen as soon as we all would like it to, 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 to go away, but Currently, uh, the public charge is still in effect, and we are still filing cases with Form 944. Okay. 844-774-3529. And the Muslim ban has been lifted, correct? Gone. Gone the first day. Gone. Gone. Oof. You know, for, for the record, Biden has issued 28 
executive orders since taking office. The, the president who has issued the most executive orders in his first month of his presidency is FDR, who issued 30. Wow. So Biden still has another two weeks to break, <laughs> to break you know, that, that, which, which is a good thing, right? Because it shows he's obviously working. Uh, it obviously shows that he is living up to his, you know, his word and he is trying to make things happen and get things done. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and as we get to the top of the hour, I, I saw something on CNN where the individual that Alan E.K., how do you pronounce his name? Marcus? Marcus? Mallorcas. Mallorcas. He, he, his one of his focus is actually to reunite family, family, you know, families. I, I thought that was so touching and that was so great that we've got somebody now that is into putting families back together after they were torn apart, you know. I'm very happy about that. So that, that is that is also one of Biden's executive orders. Um, you know, he created a task force, or you know, an uh, an agency to basically try to reunite these children with their families. You yeah. know, which is in complete contrast to what we had previously, right? Complete opposite. <laughs> That's right. You no. Know? Anyway, folks, the number is eight four four. Getting to the top of the hour. Once again, please. Share, follow, call, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. FM listeners, continue on Facebook. Here we go. All right. So as we get into it, I'll let you tail it off, um, Alan E.K., as we remind everyone, the PPID Law Forum, Friday, February the 5th at 6 p.m. on 93.5 FM, and yes, on Facebook Go to eventbrite.com if you'd like to participate. Register, bring your questions. You know, we've got people that's going to be asking questions on entertainment visas, questions on e-visas. A lot of people want to know more about O-visas. And I do believe that we have a team that will be answering those questions. Bring your immigration issues and our questions. We'll answer them for free in the forum, on the air. So bring those, all right? Thank you all so much once again. Ladies and gentlemen, the number is 844-774-3529. Alan E.K., I'll give you two minutes to top it off with any additional update that you want to conclude or, you know, introduce here on Cruising with a Case Handler, a show on immigration today with the attorneys Nelson Madrid, Alexandra Bondikov, and yourself, Alan E.K., from the firm PPID. All right. Somebody goes into the American consulate in Jamaica and asks for a visitor's visa, and the consul says no. And the person says, well, can I post the bond? And that's up to the consulate, but normally the consulate would say, forget it. Well, the Department of State now has put in a temporary final rule, November 24th, 2020, creating a temporary pilot program, which would allow the consulate to accept a bond for B1, B2 non-immigrant visa applicants, where the country had a 10% or higher overstay rate, which Jamaica does. So the idea is that now this pilot program was a, it became effective December 24th, 2020, will conclude June 24th, 2021. But in the meantime, you go into the consulate, they're having a problem issuing a B1 or B2 visa to you. You can then say, okay, look, I'll be happy to post the bond. <clears throat> and the consulate now has authority to take a bond. And the bond is just to make sure that you go back in time you don't overstay, then you get the money back. So this is something new about this temporary final, this temporary program about bond pilot program for B1, B2 non-immigrant visa applicants. So help more people get, get their temporary visas to get to the United States by posting a bond. Somewhat of an option there, right? Yes. Uh, that's good news. That's good news. That's great news. It's just how much? That's up to the consulate. Got you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thanks to each and every one for joining us right here on Cruising with a Case Handler. You can catch the show each and every single weekday at 9.30 a.m. where we speak with the attorneys on personal injury and immigration. Adam Handler, one of the attorneys at the firm, is a partner there, and he runs the personal injury department. I would like to remind you that if you do get hurt in an accident, he will handle your accident cases. That's all he does, accident cases whether it's slip and fall, um, trip and fall, slip and fall, whatever you want to call it, you know, construction accidents, medical malpractice, and so forth, automobile accidents, 
make sure you make the call, 844-774-3529. It's the same number. For immigration, same number, 844-774-3529. Um, if you've got some issues in family law and more, you know, civil, you can make a call also to the firm, and they will handle it for you. 844-PPID-LAW. Lady and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the show. And um, catch up and speak again tomorrow morning before the big one at 6 p.m. in the evening. Thank you both. I mean, thank you both, gentlemen and lady, for doing this. We'll speak soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.